Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you'll see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic. And today I'm here to talk about Season 2, Episode 9 of Paramount Plus's Mayor of Kingstown, entitled Peace in the Valley. Uh, since, this isn't, since this isn't a show that puts a whole lot of weight in episode titles, I'm going to do the same and continue. Uh, well, I'm going to start, which is a late start since we only got two episodes left, uh, not paying as much attention to the episode titles as I usually do because the show doesn't care as much. Uh, Peace in the Valley here, I... I, I I almost feel like they they kind of started to mail it in even more so, <laughs> like even more so as the season has progressed. I almost feel like this piece in the Valley title, and it, this this could be referring to a line that I missed, honestly, but again, the show, again, they're not putting too much effort into this, so why would I? But it kind of feels like uh, this is actually about the opposite, the upsetting of peace. There's about to be no peace. There's about to be the opposite of peace. There's about to be full out war uh, in the Valley, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, because of the fact that Bunny, well, we'll talk about it. Let's uh, look, we'll get to it when we get there. But because of what Bunny did at the end of the episode, uh, it looks like there's going to be full out war in the street. So quite the opposite of peace. But uh, I want to talk about some of the most of the other things I think actually that happened in this episode because a lot happens in this episode that is setting up uh, plot threads that I think are going to close in the season finale. They'll probably leave a few open. Again, not probably incorrectly assuming that they have a strong chance at season three but of course you would think that but then the injury to Jer injuries to Jeremy Renner make I think I think this is just me completely uh just assuming uh that Mike uh, Mike Jeremy Renner's injuries put season three in jeopardy but um yeah they set up a lot of interesting things here and now it's, it sucks that it's happening so late but they set up a lot of interesting things here that I would otherwise feel a great deal of concern over whether or not they'll address. But the show has proved me wrong time and time again this season by having things that I'm just like, that seemed unclear. That seemed weird. Did they fuck that up? And every, and they explain it every time in the next episode. So uh, there are a few things like that again here, but I uh, now I it took long. It took a long time. It took to the second to last episode, but now I'm kind of in a place where um, the things that I feel are unclear that we're going to talk about uh, I feel like they're probably going to address those things in the finale. So um, let's start with, I think, this, the simplest thing that doesn't require much discussion. Uh, Milo and Mike meet and they make a deal. They plan to exchange the bonds in exchange for Iris. And, um, and, and now, in my opinion, <laughs> Iris isn't even worth one of those bonds uh, reprinted on a printer with low ink. Like she's not even she's not even worth that. But if that's what Mike wants to, if Mike's willing to take that in exchange for the bonds, whatever. Uh, I believe they set up a meet for that. But we're gonna talk about uh, the little bit of time that Iris wasted this week uh, a little bit later. Also, after this scene, we see the bunny robs a gun store, and he he sets up a whole charade. Which again, why was this even necessary? If you're gonna back a truck into the building break all the glass, take the guns, and and knock out the security footage. What was the point of the entire fucking stupid charade <laughs> that he did at the beginning? 
unless it was just to keep himself inside before the store opened. Actually, that's probably what it was. They probably wanted to rob it before the store opened, and him doing that little charade made the owner feel safe enough to keep him in there, even though the store wasn't open yet. I was also kind of curious why that riled up the police so much. Like, they acted like he stole from them directly, but I do think it is just kind of like they look at Bunny as giving them a middle finger. Like, you just got out of prison. You shouldn't have been able to get out the way you did. You deserved to be in there, even though you had to deal with Mike. You should have been able to get out. And the first thing you do, like, the next day after throwing a party is rob a gun store to prepare for a war against the police and then have what happens at the end of the episode happen. Like, yeah, it's probably they're probably just looking at it like, what a middle finger to us that Bunny gets out and does this shit. So... Before I fully get into the episode, I want to talk about, again, I want uh, about Iris briefly, because Kyle asked Mike in this episode what Iris means to him. And I want to know the answer to that, too. And he's given answers, like, he gives an answer that basically amounts to, like, oh, I want to save a bird with a broken wing kind of, kind of deal, right? Like, she's vulnerable. She's, uh, I, from his perspective, she's probably weak. She needs the help of a man like me. She's so, she, like a damsel in distress, and I'm big, tough, badass Mike McCluskey, and I'm the only person who could save her from Milo. Like, this weird fucking superhero Captain Save-A-Ho shit. Like, I, I, don't, I don't really get it. But I, at the end of the day, I don't think this show has done a good enough job of selling me on Iris justifiably holding such a high value with Mike. Like, do you guys feel like you've seen a Mike and Iris relationship that justifies this level of concern for her because I don't think I have and I don't even think the actress has put particularly any effort into showing like a transition in her character like she's kind of just been like this solemn uh feisty at feisty at weird times person who just do, who just soft-spoken doesn't say much completely uninteresting look at okay here's a here's an example look at the last of us if you're watching this show and you're not watching the last of us what the fuck's wrong with you uh in well, and now, the nine full nine-episode season, the first season of The Last of Us, they were able to showcase a relationship from start to finish, at least this season, that started with hatred and ended with love in a very believable and emotional way. After 19 episodes of this show, fully 10 full more fucking extra episodes, I still don't give a fuck about Iris, and I still don't know why Mike does either. Like, that, they have 19 episodes to have made me believe that Mike should care this much about this woman, and they, and they have failed. Whereas The Last of Us, in nine episodes, justified that justified strong and emotional feelings and behaviors in half the time that this show has not even not done that to the degree that Last of Us does. Last of Us, like, they're not even close. Like, they've done, like, 5% of the work that Last of Us did in half the time. Like, that, like, it just doesn't work like this, man. Like, you can't say, oh, he has a soft spot for her because she's broken and vulnerable, but I need to see more of that on the air in the show that you gave me. Like, I can't hear Mike saying this, saying those words, like, oh, I have a spot, soft spot for her. Like, that's not good enough. Like, I need to see these two go through some shit together. I need to see, like, more than they have. I'm not saying they haven't done shit, but I'm just saying, like, there hasn't been enough on the screen after 19 episodes for me to believe that, like, really the finale is gonna, like... Like, this might be the climax of the finale. This this uh, exchange of bonds to Milo in exchange for Iris. This might be the climax of the finale, and they put no fucking effort into this. None. Especially this season. Like, no... Like, I don't give a fuck about Iris. The least important thing... Like, Iris and Milo aren't even in... They're not even remotely kind of... Every single every single storyline on this show is more interesting, interesting to me than Milo and I. Robert's more interesting. Ian and what happened with Charlie is more interesting. Bunny's more interesting. Mike's uh, more interesting. And his whole thing with Evelyn and the DA, all that kind of shit. That's more interesting. Uh, Miriam and her little... I don't even like Miriam. And Miriam and her fucking storyline with that... That little fucking teenage boy is more interesting than Iris and Milo. They put no effort into that, and I bet that's how they're going to wrap the season. And that's going to be this show's biggest failure when we look back on it. Like, if it only runs these two seasons, and we're like, oh, that was a cool little Jeremy Renner 
Taylor Sheridan vehicle that ran for that little bit of time. That, that's going to be the failure of this show. The importance that they put on Mike and Iris combined with how little effort they put into making me give a fuck about Mike and Iris. So uh, moving on from that, it turns out that Mike doesn't know that Bunny was out. And uh, that's interesting to me because like he didn't have anything to do with it, which gives new life to my complaint that he went off the grid while Bunny was still locked up because I thought he was free. I'm like, so like, at, at, so at the beginning of last episode, Mike's like, I'm going off the grid. He leaves his phone. I'm like, you can't do that. Bunny ain't even free yet. You can't just go off the grid. But then they had the, like the next scene, Bunny's talking to Raph and he's like, yeah, I'm free. I'm getting out tomorrow. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess Bunny, I mean, I guess Mike and Evelyn took care of that off screen, which that annoyed me that that happened off screen. But at least I was like, okay, so that happened. But now it turns out Mike didn't even know Bunny was free. So Mike, so Mike really did go off the grid at the worst possible fucking time. Like I was willing to write him off with the bunny shit because I'm like, okay, Mike going off the grid is definitely gonna get Miriam's little uh, little boy killed, and he's gonna go off the grid like when Bunny's situation is at his absolute fucking worst. He's gonna go off the grid. That was dumb. And then I gave that back to them. Like, okay, I guess Bunny was already out. No, he wasn't. So that goes right back to being stupid. So Mike, Mike's going off the grid episode was a colossal fuck-up for Mike. It's gonna end up costing him a ton. And then this episode did nothing to explain why he needed to go off the grid to do anything that he did. Like, that wasn't even addressed in this episode. So in the finale, man, the finale has so much to address, but the finale needs to address that. Like, why did he have that whole mission last week? And why did he need to go off the grid to do it since it cost him so much? And this really does feel like they made him go off the grid just so they could justifiably have all the terrible things happen here. So it's kind of like a plot thing. Like, uh, this is the this is the place we want to end up. We're not going to pay too much, too close attention to how we get there. Let's just have Mike leave his phone because he needs a day off. Like, that's lazy. And I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. But the criticism that is now off the table in, in its place is the complaint of how they handle Bunny's release, right? So, like, I felt like they underplayed it, right? And I'm like, how do you just gonna have him write it? How do you just gonna have it like this throwaway line? Evelyn didn't even want to do it. And now, it, apparently, it happened off screen. And and they're just gonna have Bunny say it in this throwaway line? I was like, they built this up. You know, you, you guys heard all my complaints about that, right? Well, turns out, we find out this week, Evelyn didn't sign the paper. So, not only that... She's like, if I get elected DEA, I'm going to do everything I can to make your life a living hell and to ruin you, Mike. <laughs> like, so um, it turns out that the woman from the Warwick prison group uh, is uh, helped get Bunny released. And, and I'm curious as to both how and why she did that. Like, and we didn't even see her in this episode. We, I think we've only seen her like once or twice the whole season. Like, this is a, it's very likely you guys would be like, who the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> we only saw her a couple of times. And... Why, what, what investment would she have in getting Bunny out of prison? I think that's going to be the most interesting aspect of this that we need to see in the finale is what her motivation is. But then also, how does she have this influence where she can get somebody out of prison subverting the DA? Whether that's the dead DA, whether that's Evelyn, she somehow subverted him and maybe even the governor, unless maybe she has something, uh, maybe like, so I don't know if we've seen the governor on this show. Maybe the governor of this show, she has a relationship with that guy, and we'll meet the governor next week, and we'll find out this is some whole thing. And maybe maybe the Warwick woman wants Bunny out because she knows that he's going to take revenge against someone she wants taken revenge against. Like, maybe she has a beef with Robert or something like that. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm real curious to find out her how and her why. Then, um, in a fairly, I think, a, a fairly funny moment, it was at least funny for me, and it could, I, I mean, I was high, so that could be. There's another There's another moment, too, where I was laughing. I'm like, oh, this could be because I'm high. But if, after Evelyn is telling Mike, like, yeah, I'm going to come after you. I'm going to ruin you so your people can't fuck the streets up. She, like, leaves, but then comes back. I'm like, this is like, and another thing. And, she, and she's like, oh, your guy Robert just kills with impunity. Like, isn't it convenient that the person who was going to testify him ends up dead? Oh, shit, Mike. <laughs> Mike's like, wait, what? Like, she thought that was going to be, like, a booyah moment for him. Mike didn't fucking know about it, right? Uh, but we'll come back to that moment a little bit later. Um, Miriam finally gets in touch with Mike after his absence last week to tell him about this kid. We find out this kid's name is Jacob Reed. Maybe we found it out before, and I just didn't write it down. But uh, his kid, this kid's name is Jacob Reed. Mike calls Kareem to help, but it, it all ends up being for naught. Uh, Mike's going off the grid 
ultimately cost this Jacob Reed kid his life. He doesn't get there in time. Reed gets transferred. We don't see him much in this episode, but he gets fucked with by a couple of white guys and he lays his head down behind a tire. They back over his fucking head. What a sick shot. Um, I knew this storyline was going to end poorly. I said it. I, I probably said it in one of my videos. Like, uh, Mike's going Mike's, to uh, fuck this up uh, going off the grid. Like, you know, uh, yeah, this, this, there was no other way this was going to go. Uh, I'm curious if there's going to be a fallout from it or not, or if this was kind of just like, yeah, we need to give Diane Weiss something to do, so let's just give her this stupid fucking storyline in, in the back half of the season. I don't know if it's going to be inconsequential or not. I feel like this show has a lot of dangling threads leading into the finale. I think that needs to not be one of them, but I guess we'll see. Uh, and speaking of my my other favorite funny moments that I I don't know, you guys tell me if you if this came off funny to you. This is the one that definitely had me laughing, and I definitely was in my notes like, maybe it's because I'm high, but this is really fucking funny. Um, but my favorite scene of the episode is when Ian tells Mike that the Robert thing went away, and he's like, well, what the fuck you mean it went away? And Ian's all like, <laughs> Ian's like not making eye contact and being super obvious he's lying. He's like, yeah, you know, sometimes things just go, like, he's like, like actively trying to avoid looking at Mike. Like, well, maybe you called somebody. I don't know. <laughs> And it's like very over the top and obvious line. And I'm like, how is Mike not picking up on this? Then he goes with this. <laughs> then he goes with this whole thing. He's like, Napoleon didn't answer letters for two weeks. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like Napoleon's getting letters on a boat and shit. Like, oh, I'm not gonna answer that shit. Like, and then like, how does Ian know this? I, I don't know. It was just really over the top line, and I thought it was fucking hilarious to me. And like, yeah, Napoleon just said, oh, if it's not, if it's still important in two weeks, then I'll answer. And I'm like, what the f why are you? <laughs> Well, how is this even comparable? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I said earlier, I was going to come back to the scene where Evelyn snaps on Mike for the guy who testified against Robert being dead. His, his name was Ben something or other. We, we remember that from last week. Well, now's the time to talk about that. So uh, Bunny and Mike talk, and Bunny tells Mike, he's like, you and me are square, we're good, but a toll has to be paid for what happened in the riots. And he's like, I, I want that swap motherfucker. Of course he's talking about Robert, right? Now, here's where we need to have a conversation, me and you guys. At this point, I figured, okay, I must have missed something. I've been saying all season that all bets are off in a prison riot, and if prisoners are rioting, it is what it is, right? I'm like, I don't understand what the SWAT people could have done where uh, the DA feels like so, uh, uh, heads got a roll on the SWAT team, and, like, the heart attack letter plot, all of that felt really forced to me because I'm like, okay, they went in, there, they tried to squash a prison riot. What's the big fucking deal? Why do heads have to roll? Now you got Bunny talking about, I want that SWAT motherfucker. And I'm like, oh, and then you have Kyle asking the police captain, like, why, like, why is Robert under fire? Like, he saved people, all, which is true. And I'm just like, I don't understand why this is so, why everybody has it out for the SWAT team. And Bunny saying that he wants that SWAT motherfucker. I'm like, okay, I definitely missed something. Let me go back. That's why this video is out late. Let me go back and watch the season one finale again. And let me see if I missed something, if I misinterpreted something, whatever the case may be. Well, turns out I was wrong. <laughs> I went back and watched it. And when SWAT comes to rescue Ian and Kyle, because you remember they were trapped in the prison, they were stuck in there, they were there for some other shit, uh, just so happened to pop off when the riot popped off. They were in there when the riot popped off. When SWAT comes to rescue them, they go down a sewer hole that's outside the prison, and almost immediately, they come upon Ian and Kyle. Like, there's a couple of guys that are about to kill Ian and Kyle. Then you hear gunshots. Those guys drop, and that's when Robert comes up with SWAT. Now, also, mind you, and this could be on me. It could be because I didn't cover season one. I did not see that face and go, hey, that, that guy is Robert, and he's part of Mike's team. Not, like, I did not make that connection. Now, after seeing Robert all year with him having been a focal point of this season, when I watched it again, I'm like, okay, Robert is clearly at the front of the SWAT team, okay? Now, so that's the first thing to remember is I had no idea who Robert was uh, in season one while I was watching it. But now that I've seen him so much this year, when I watched it again, I recognize Robert as being the head of the SWAT team. So they get there, they save Ian and Kyle. Ian's like, he says something effective like, get us out of here. And Robert goes... Yeah, we will, but we got to take him out first. No, he's no, he said we got to take it to him first. And then he says something to Kyle to the effect of like, if we don't, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. Something like that. Something like that. At that time, when I was watching season one, 
I didn't piece together what was happening here. But on rewatch, it was super fucking clear. They could have gone right back out the way they were, the way they came, out of the sewer with Ian and Kyle, mission accomplished, you got your guys out, done and done. Robert instead chooses, chooses to go deeper into the prison with the explicit purpose of killing inmates for revenge. So <laughs> now I'm like, okay, now I see it. Because from Kyle's perspective, Robert saved me. Why are we going after him? He was probably distraught, frantic, no idea what was going on, right? Robert goes and scoops him. He's shooting motherfuckers in the back. He's shooting people that aren't doing anything. Like, there's some guys just, like, coming down the stairs. He shoots those guys. <laughs> like, Robert was very clearly on a vengeful... I'm executing people path. Like, he could have went back out the sewer, and he made it a point. He went in the back door. Instead of going right back out the back door, he made it a point to go through the whole house to come out the front door because he wanted to take people out on the way out. There was no self... Well, there was some self-defense, but, like, it wasn't like... Like, the way I looked at it, I was like, oh, this... Like, and see, when I watched it originally, I was like, oh, I guess this is the only way out the prison. They got to go this way. And he was taking people out on the way. So it's like, I, and then, like I said, it was mixed in with like people who were attacking them and people who weren't doing anything. So it wasn't until I went back and watched this second time with like, okay, let me see what's going on here, that I, one, noticed Robert was very clearly the head of the SWAT unit, two, that he could have gone back out and that he went with the expressed purpose of going through the prison to start shit, kind of like a... Uh, when Liam Neeson said <laughs> something had like something like a black guy almost raped his daughter or something like that, and he went out one day looking for black people to harm. <laughs> like, like that's what Robert was doing. He was like, he went through the prison looking for black people. <laughs> he didn't just harm black people, by the way. Matter of fact, I don't. Yeah, no, he did shoot a couple black people, but uh, yeah, but he goes back out with the intent of mowing down people on the way, and then, yeah, I, I, and that was what that was. So now. When I hear Bunny saying he wants Robert specifically, if you can get past the idea that Robert didn't specifically target black inmates or anything like that, and I don't know how Bunny would know to target Robert specifically because he wasn't there. He didn't come across Robert. He doesn't know Robert. Like I don't know why he would know that Robert was the person who was doing what happened uh, in the prison. But if you're going to get past that, it makes sense why Robert has been such a strong focus in the back half of the season. So I am now forced to eat crow and retract all of my criticisms about uh, Robert uh, being targeted. Now, if you still want to look at it as like, it's a prison riot, all bets are off, that's fine. And to a degree, I still look at it that way, to a degree. But now I, at the very least, understand the police slash DA side of it. I'm sorry, like the, I'm sorry, the gang slash DA side of it, where they're like, yo, this dude very clearly went out of his way to kill people he was shooting people in the back. Like I said, he he was not. This was not completely self defense. He went through the. Per he went there to send a message, and that's what makes the ending of this episode that much more impactful because he got that message back, right? So, um, even before I get to that, this also makes it a lot less justifiable that Robert got all indignant at Mike for asking him if he killed that Ben guy. Because even before I went back and watched episode, I mean the season one finale, it's a valid question, Robert. Like, what the fuck? Like, you that heart attack letter was at you. It's a you are clearly a volatile ass motherfucker. Like, it makes sense. It's a valid question to ask. Did you kill the potential fucking witness? And I guess from Robert's perspective, he looked at it like that's my peer. But at the same time, like this motherfucker was about to testify against you. It's a valid question to ask. You can't not ask and be like, oh, I don't want, I can't not ask this because I don't want to hurt my friend's feelings. Like, it's a very real possibility he did it. Now, when you add on the fact that he tore through the prison with the express purpose of killing people for no reason or to send a message back at them, people who didn't even do nothing, it's a, it's a really good question to ask him that. So I'm really surprised <laughs> that Robert has the nerve to get mad he was asked that question considering everything that Robert has done up to this point. Like, that is your M.O., sir. Like, that is in your wheelhouse. It is, he has every right to ask if you kill the witness because it sounds like something you would do. <laughs> so, uh, Mike meets with Bunny and tells him that he needs the guns back. The ATF is coming. You don't want this smoke. There's going to be all kinds of problems you don't want any part of. Bunny says that he wants Robert and he gets what he wants. And then the episode ends with Robert, I think, beaten to the point like within an inch of life, but I do not believe Robert to be dead. I think Robert's going to be alive, but alive or dead, the statement is made, 
uh, Bunny made his move on the police, and now uh, the, the finale, just like season one finale, was a riot in a prison. Season two going to be a riot in the street. So uh, looking forward to it. Closing with a couple of thoughts. Uh, husband of the year, Kyle, uh, lets his wife leave him because he has to help Mike save worthless fucking Iris. <laughs> wow, wow, Kyle, why? Wow, wow. Uh, when Mike is asking Bunny for the guns back, he's like, Mike is, he's like, I trust the people I shouldn't have as it pertains to like getting Bunny out of prison. And Bunny says, pauses, and he goes, I feel that. And I love how that felt very much like so did I. Like, that's what he was saying to Mike. Like, yeah, I also trust the people I shouldn't have. Referring to Mike. Like, and so the, I feel that felt very much like a, yeah, I fucked up trusting you too. Um, and then Iris, in general Iris form, makes a brief appearance in this episode in which she kills Joseph. I said I was going to come back to this. What was that scene about? Like, we have the scene, like, uh, so I think she called Mike to set up a meet for the her and, uh, the her and the bonds exchange. The next time we see Iris, she's sitting in what looks like a hotel room with champagne, and it looks like she takes pills. I'm like, what the fuck is she doing? Because I'm like, the last time we saw her, she's setting up a meeting with Mike. I'm thinking Mike's about to walk in. Joseph walks in, which I, I think I think we're meant to be surprised that Joseph walks in, and he's like, yeah, I, I paid for you for three hours, and he plans on doing all this kind of shit, and she ends up killing him. But what was she expecting to happen? Was she expecting Joseph? Was she expecting Mike? Was she expecting someone different? Why did she take a pill? Was this just like, oh, I'm thinking I'm going to... Was it just like a regular casual meeting? Not casual, but like she thought she was doing a job, right? I'm about to meet with a client. I got my I got my champagne here. I'm in a whole hotel room. Let me pop my molly. I'm good. Turns out that the uh, client she was waiting for was Joseph. Joseph comes in with his intentions and whatever happens, happens. That's probably what it was. But the way they edited it, like to have that scene follow her calling Mike and setting up a meet, that made it confusing. So I feel like there maybe should have been a scene in between there where like maybe she calls up Mike to set up the meeting. And then maybe the one girl, what's I think what's her name? Like Tatiana or something. Like the one that like seems like she's in charge of all of Milo's women. Maybe she's like, oh, you have a client that wants to meet with you at three. Make sure you hurry up. Then we have that scene. We have that scene. Now I'm like, oh, she's waiting for the client. But in that moment, I'm like, oh, she's waiting for Mike. And then Joseph comes in. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I'm like, why does she take a pill? So like, I, that's one of those things where I, I do think they probably fucked that up with the way they edited that together. Um, like without having like a connecting scene, not even a connecting scene, but a scene to make the, the hotel scene make more sense. But um, minor complaint. Uh, and I, I think if, 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 and if it was done the way they intended it, I'm sure it'll make sense to me in the finale. So I will see you guys next week for the finale. And until then, peace.